Hi, Dina. What are you doing? Well, the last time we talked, we helped Katie at CatTube use webhooks to set up a system for processing GitHub issues. I'm worried the functions may not complete before they time out. Or there might be an error and the whole thing will fail. I think we have just the thing to help Katie improve her webhook. Katie's webhook is currently set up to create notifications, trigger an action, and stream data into BigQuery. That's a lot for one webhook. You're right. Her current system works, but it's fragile. Everything is tangled together and running synchronously. This means we're not returning a response to GitHub until all the functions have completed. That's risky business, given that each of these services are constrained by timeouts. Cloud Run has a 15-minute timeout, but GitHub wants a valid response within 10 seconds of its request. Katie's request must be completed by the shorter of these two timeouts. Katie will probably be able to complete all three functions in under 10 seconds, but I wouldn't want to rely on probably. Luckily, we can use PubSub to asynchronously handle the events from the GitHub API. Katie creates a new Cloud Run endpoint to be the initial webhook target. This new endpoint will verify the signature, publish the message to PubSub, and quickly return a 200 OK status message to GitHub thus allowing the rest of the work to be processed asynchronously. Uh, but once you send the message to PubSub, uh, how do you trigger those functions? Well, we need to create another service and have it subscribed to the PubSub topic. This way, it'll be triggered whenever a message is posted to the topic. For additional security, when we create the service, we should allow only authorized requests and set up PubSub to send us authorization tokens. Here we can look at our reconfigured Slack function. It's confirming that the data it receives looks like a PubSub message and then triggers the notification to Slack. Thanks to our setup, we don't have to worry about authorization or signature verification. Our architecture looks a little more complicated now, but we've solved our issue with the timeouts. And as an added bonus, this kind of decoupling creates a system that is better able to handle errors. Uh, what do you mean, Dana? Well, by creating separate services for our three different functions, we ensure that if one service has an error, the other two are not affected. This is one of the benefits of a microservice architecture. That's great. But what do we do about the errors in the broken service? If the message is not successfully delivered, PubSub will keep retrying until it succeeds. Once we have the service back online, the messages will be processed through our healthy service. So before, Katie's webhook target worked, but it was synchronously triggering three distinct functions, meaning it was at risk for timeouts and for one error in one function, taking down the whole service. That's right. But now that Katie has rewritten her webhook to send all events through PubSub, she has a more robust and fault-tolerant webhook target ready to take on the world. Thanks to PubSub and a microservice architecture, Katie can rest assured that her team isn't missing any notifications or losing any data. <laughs>